female traps. We've got a range of traps here. Some of the traps are quite, the sensitivity of the traps is quite important. Uh, often we're only catching low numbers. With the, with the uh, new, uh, DPI traps that have been out, which I haven't got one here, uh, they, they are not that sensitive. But their threshold was five flies over two weeks as an outbreak. So we're only catching five, it's not many. If you miss one or two, uh, can be uh, it's difficult, difficult to interpret those traps. So we've had a, a range of traps out, and I think uh, there'll be a, uh, the presentation will be included in the notes after the, the um, conference. We've got some new traps out. Most of these come from Europe, uh, where med fly is a major problem. They don't have Queensland fruit fly, although it's been in Hawaii for a while. Uh, there's uh, a whole range of traps that have come through. This trap is called a cone trap, certainly being the most sensitive. Uh, it'll catch two or three times more than any other, other traps around. And it's partly to do with the, uh, the shape of the trap, the colour, the way the flies go into the, um, the, the cone itself, and the killing mechanism in there too. They always use the same pheromone in there. It's a Q lure pheromone. They did have different killing techniques. I do have some. What's the main purpose of trapping? Is it to determine that they're already around the I think two things for the trapping is one is to see what you've got coming into the orchard. So that's, uh, these are male traps. This one. Uh, these are all male traps, so they pick up the male fly. So it gives you an idea. The male, as males do, tend to roam a lot more. So they'll go out a lot further than the females do. The, the wet traps, well, this is a serra trap that has a bait in it, which will catch the female flies. Um, the female needs a protein as part of the life cycle to, to lay the eggs. So they go to uh, a food source and they don't travel as far. So with the trapping, if you're monitoring, uh, it's important to know what the males are doing because we'll pick up those first, but also if you've got females coming into the orchard. With this uh, program that we have, it's using both the male and the female traps. There's a, actually a, a perimeter of traps around the outside of the orchard, sorting out how far those traps need to be apart, whether it's 10 metres or 20 metres or so, and catching both the male and the female. So you're catching the, the flies before they establish into the block. <coughs> you might get uh, uh, some, maybe not too much, but some stings around the outside of the block as they come in, but it's, it's catching them and stopping, stopping them to establish inside the block. Yeah, Russell, is that, are you, are you saying this where you haven't got bait spray program happening or is this just everywhere you... Well, it's a, a, an alternative to the bait spray. Yeah. Bait spraying is, um, is a key element in controlling the fruit fly because yeah. it kills a female. So there's, there's pair 33, which is bait spray. Yeah. And what's that other one's the ICA 47? 47, which is the inspection. Yeah, so is this ICA 47 then? No, no, no. Uh, probably after July we won't really need it at the ICOs because we're going to be in Victoria anyway. The suspensions are not good, so I'm not sure. 
So at the end of the day, we want to be doing this to make sure we don't get the thing That's the right. And this, yeah. I mean, partly with the ICA is it's doing something uh, to improve into sensitive markets. Uh, this is more about controlling fruit fly on the orchard. So do you, do you reckon a trapping grid is going to stop it going in better than a bait spray or, or not as good? Or At the moment, this is a three-year project. Uh, this is the first year of it. Uh, we've got sites at Young. Uh, on cherries, uh, at Yanko on citrus, and here on peaches. Uh, theoretically, it should be, yes. It, uh, but it's going to take a fair bit of work. I think two things with it. It's going to be a lot of traps. And why we're looking at traps is because they're going to be expensive. So uh, the cheaper the trap we can you know, get out there, you know, the better the uptake's going to be. And the other is that the traps are going to be probably for 12 months of the year, especially up in this area, I think. Because if the flies go busted for 12 months of the year, it'll be maybe June and July when they're slow, it's colder, uh, but they, they will survive. So if they survived in the towns and surviving out on the orchards and they'll just sit there, so if you can pick up anything early on, it's just going to pull the population down all the time to keep it suppressed. No, it's here, it's only early days for this project, but it's going to be an alternative to the bait spray. The Bait spraying certainly is a key element because it uh, kills the female fly. The uh, foliar spraying is, is an option. It's, um, it's limited because we've lost a few chemicals. The ones we use are a knockdown, but that's really all they are. There's very short residual with them. They don't have a long-term effect. And the, the other one is, uh, I want to call it a MAT system or male annihilation technique. It's one of the... Uh, Inside there is a um, amulet cumulate. That's just a cardboard disc packed over with the pheromone plus an insecticide. You hang those out in the orchard at 16 per hectare. The attracted male flies to that. Uh, they land on it, pick up the insecticide, and die. Also, need, with any system like that, though, you need a, a tracking system to know if you've got flies there and if they're under control. Especially with fruit flight, there's no other indication until you see stings in the fruit, which is a bit too late. Uh, and with, yeah, with anything like that, it's only really using a female uh, lure. And they're all wet lures or bait lures because they come in to feed on the protein. They're, they're messy and they're stinky and that, but they're the best that's available at the moment. Um, so we'll give you updates though as, uh, as we go through. Peaches that we've got, they're a pale queen, so they'll, only, they'll be picked in another uh, week, probably. Not uh, go right through the harvest. We're starting to catch some flies in the in the traps around the, that that block. And I know there's a lot of flies either end of the, of the block from uh, different sources. So in the next month or six weeks, we'll really see how effective it's going to be. Um, talking to uh, Bill Ashcroft yesterday. And saying about getting uh, the municipal associations on board with all the shires around the place because uh, you know all the backyards have got fruit trees or tomatoes or whatever yeah. and there's you know hosts all over the place <laughs> is there any way of get, getting these traps basically everywhere so that we try and get rid of it once and for all with uh, the local industry here which includes the growers association and BPAJ, which is the Grass Association, together with the Moira Shire on the Victorian side and uh, Berrigan Shire, which is on the New South Wales side, and us as industry, as service providers. We put a proposal into the Moira Shire, put it into the State Government, uh, Victorian State Government, the Berrigan Shire and the New South Wales Government for funding uh, for a pilot program. And this one is how to manage fruit fly in, in a fruit producing area. Really. So it's an awareness and education program. Yeah. Hopefully we can start it in August if the funding comes through. It's going to involve uh, meetings, the town meetings involve uh, probably using uh, this sort of system in the towns to, um, to kill the fruit fly. Looking at uh, release of sterile flies, especially in towns, to, to help control it. Maybe some subsidised traps for home gardeners to do it. Uh, 
And it's really just raising the awareness to everyone that it, it is here, it is management. If you want to grow fruit or vegetables at home, I want to call tomatoes. It's going to be a classic. You know, getting a lot of people coming in now saying they've got stings in their tomatoes. Uh, what do they do? It's got expansion bags, but it's really starting with something early. So we put this, uh, this project up as a, as a pilot program, really for the rest of the state, if we can get it up and going. There's certainly a lot of interest about it from the rest of the state and from the government, and DPI and biosecurity. Uh, it just depends on if the funding's going to be available to do it. It's going to be that. We want to do something in kind, but at the end of the day, get <coughs> householders up, to get uh, these MAT systems out. Yeah, it's going to have to come from somewhere. It has to be sourced from somewhere. So hopefully we should hear over the next couple of months that it's going to be successful. Because we're in a suspension zone now, you know, we, uh, and it's, that was promoted uh, 12 months ago, I think it comes into force in July, or the end of July. Uh, but the rest of the state will be as a suspension zone. So it'll only be going for the county difference is going to be the pest tree area, with, uh, in the Sun Rosa, and um, all going by the sensitive markets. But moving it within Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, might be an issue. Don't have to do any trees. Sorting out, we're trying a lot, okay, so are available. Uh, uh, yeah, if anyone wants any more information on traps or tracking, uh, please let me know. Uh, and follow up. They're going to be probably available over the next couple of months. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah.